I'm gonna make a mind if it takes all night. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? I like girl. I'm gonna make a mind if it takes all night. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? In 1965, Title 18, Health Insurance for the Aged and Disabled what, of the Social Security Act was passed, starting what is now known as Medicare. Medicare was traditionally a two-part program. Part A, also known as hospital insurance, pays for, care, uh, pays for care provided to patients in hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, hospices, and home health care programs. Part B, or supplemental medical insurance, provides coverage for physician services, outpatient hospital care, and a variety of medical services not covered under Part A. In 1997, Part C was added, which was known as the Medicare Plus Choice Program, but is now called Medicare Advantage. It allowed for the beneficiary to participate in private health plans like HMOs and PPOs. In 2003, Part D, which was the Medicare Prescription Drug, Drug Improvement and Modernization Act, established a prescription drug benefit for beneficiaries to also add. Helen is a retired bank teller, 67 years of age, who was recently afflicted with a serious illness. After spending 10 days in the hospital, she spent four weeks in a skilled nursing facility before being discharged to her home. During her recuperation, Helen often reflected on how lucky she was to be enrolled in Medicare. Because of her limited income, it was reassuring to know that Medicare would take care of her substantial health care expenses. Helen was shocked, however, when she began receiving bills that Medicare did not pay. Adding up the bills from the hospital, skilled nursing facility, pharmacy, and her physician, she owed more than $2,000. Helen could not understand how she could owe so much money when she had health insurance through Medicare. Such a program would be enacted by Congress. Why or why not? I do believe that Congress would enact a program much like Medicare. It would be necessary to give people an equal opportunity to receive health care, especially with the aging baby boomer population and increased life expectancy. If you were speaking to a group of senior citizens, how would you explain the importance of Medicare supplemental insurance to them? Well, even though it may seem like Medicare will pay for all health care bills, it doesn't. Medicare Part A only pays for 45% of elderly persons' health care charges. Even healthy Medicare enrollees who only visit their physicians a few times per year will be liable for premiums, deductibles, and coinsurance associated with Part B, as well as the full cost of services that are not covered by Medicare. In 2002, Medicare beneficiaries paid an average of $2,200 out of pocket for health care expenses. These expenses may be covered if the patients have additional retiree health insurance through a former employer or union if they are poor enough to qualify for assistance for Medicaid, if they enroll in a managed care plan, or finally, patients can purchase supplemental insurance, which is designed to pay for many of the charges for Medicare-covered services for which the beneficiary is responsible. What do you believe are the most reasonable options for avoiding depletion of the HI Trust Fund? In order to stop health insurance fund from depleting, the government must exercise two options either adding revenue to supplement the fund or cut expenses. The prominent way the government could add revenue would be through taxes. These taxes could be on alternative health insurance options, such as a tax on businesses that do not offer insurance plans to employees. These taxes, such as that example, could pull into the HI fund. The second way the government could slow down the depleting health insurance fund would be by cutting spending. This could be done by restricting eligibility to individuals who use the fund. Medicare could also limit their services to the most medically necessary for those individuals who need the most severe care, but cut back on coverage for more routine checkups. 
What do you see as the advantages of delivering services to Medicare beneficiaries through managed care plans? There are five basic advantages to delivering services to Medicare beneficiaries through managed care plans. They are coverage of the copayment for days 61 through 90 of inpatient hospitalization, coverage of the copayment for lifetime hospital inpatient reserve days, coverage of 100% of Medicare eligible hospital expenses after all Medicare hospital benefits are exhausted, coverage of the three pint blood deductible, and coverage of the Medicare Part B coinsurance.